Hi everybody and welcome to this edition of Taco Tuesday in my backyard and obviously we're going to be doing some grilling and for this particular edition I'm going to talk about tacos al pastor. So you know tacos al pastor is my guess. You've seen the great big vertical spit like the shawarma kind of spit or the gyros kind of spit that is layered with pork that's marinated. Sometimes people will put onions in there but mostly it's just pork that's layered and then it is roasted in front of either a charcoal or a gas fire until it gets seared and crusty on one side and then they'll to flip it around and slice all of that off. There's usually a pineapple on the top and the taquero will reach up and just grab with the end of his knife just a little of that pineapple, flick it off of there, catch it on the taco and hand it to you. Can't do it at home, okay? No matter what you think, you can't really do it at home, but I can get you pretty close to it. And that's what I'm gonna show you today. So oftentimes uh, they will use leg meat for making this layered tacos al pastor spit. Uh, what I'm gonna suggest to you is boneless shoulder roast, and here's why. First of all, you can get it, okay? The leg meat's really hard to get in the United States because most of it's made into ham. Um, but if you get a, a pork shoulder roast and then pound it like I'm gonna show you now, um, you can get tender and very flavorful pork. We're gonna use our grill to do it, but it's gonna be a slightly different approach than the big spit thing. Okay, so this is what a boneless pork shoulder roast looks like. Several different muscles make up this and they all are, have varying degrees of tenderness. So to get them all into pretty much the same place after you cut little slabs off that are a little bit more than a quarter of an inch thick, we're going to pound it. Now you'll need a heavy pounder to do this. One of those really lightweight ones will be really hard to, to get any kind of of tenderizing going um, but this big heavy one you can buy them you can buy them online the really heavy uh, mallet you want one that weighs about two pounds or so but just go around on the meat like this just pounding now I'm leaving all of that connective tissue and fat in there and I'll tell you the reason that I'm doing it because I want it to base the meat as I am cooking it. So when everything has been pounded to about an eighth of an inch thick, then you're ready to go on to the marinade. So I think I'm gonna stop with that. Okay, so into the blender, I am going to put achiote. So this is a product that you can buy at a Mexican grocery store. Sometimes you can find it at a very well-stocked grocery store as well. This is the classic marinade for cochinita pibil, the most famous dish from the Yucatan Peninsula. This is achiote with garlic and spices and herbs. Okay, it comes in this cellophane wrapped package and this sort of rusty orange looking mixture is what you want to break up into your food i mean into your blender here now i'm using achote because most of the people in mexico city where tacos al pastor are very famous that's what they use but i have to get the red chili part of it in there and usually they would use a classic red chili adobo to speed things up i'm going to use chipotle chilies in adobo, the canned ones. And I'm gonna put about three of these guys into the blender with about all of the, the juice from the can. Because the juice from the can is really what I'm looking for. It's got seasonings, it's got tomato in it, and it's got lots of herbs and spices as well. So I'm gonna just put all of that into the blender jar. Then a quarter cup of oil because I'm gonna use, I'm gonna be grilling, so I wanted to get some oil in this and some water to facilitate the grinding and help to give us the right consistency. Okay, so that achiote, which is staining my fingers right now, is, needs to be blended until it's completely smooth. Good thing is, it breaks up pretty fast like that. 
Okay, so this is our marinade for this mixture. I'm going to take um, the a little bit of the marinade and smear it over the pounded pork shoulder roast slice here. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side because I really do want this to be nicely seasoned with these classic flavors. That's the way it would be in the spit. Okay, so a light coating of it on both sides like that. And we're ready now to go on over to the grill. So I'll pick this guy up. And we're going to lay it onto the grill. And I'm going to cook it only on one side so that I get that texture that you get when you get the slices off of the trompo, they call it, the big vertical spit, and you get the charred side, and then you get the soft side. So I'm only gonna cook this on one side here. Okay, so throw it down there, hot grill. Now over here, I have some grilled pineapple, that pineapple part of it, and onions, which you oftentimes will see on the, the, uh, the taqueros that do tacos al pastor. So I'm gonna pull those guys off and onto this tray. You'll notice here that I have done them on this uh, grilling mat. I find these really useful because nothing sticks to them and you can get beautiful char marks through them. They have a metal element in them and I think that they work really good. So let's go over and check out how we're gonna finish this service. Okay, you can see it shrunk up just a little bit. I'm gonna make sure that it's, okay, so see the char? That's what I'm really looking for. I wanna get that beautiful char. Um, I can see that the pork is done all the way through, even though I haven't flipped it over. So I'm just gonna pull it off right now and we'll take it over to the cutting board here and cut this up. Yeah, you can see it's cooked all the way through very nicely. Now for this, when you're making tacos al pastor and trying to mimic that spit, you're gonna wanna slice this pretty thin. And you can cut, a, cut the fat out if you want, but I wouldn't. I think it makes a really nice textural contrast in it and it'll give you the flavor. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna take that, that little hunk of it out there. Okay, so let's give this just another little sprinkling of salt, which I like to do after I cut all meat. Give it, I think it's taken me back to my favorite place in Mexico City for eating tacos al pastor. Um, we've got our grilled pineapple here. So cut around the core. This is just slices off of the whole pineapple. We'll cut around the core and then um, just cut it into small bits. And then the same thing with our, our onion. I'm gonna cut that into smaller pieces like that. We'll just toss everything together, which is if you're gonna serve tacos al pastor to a party, that's what I would suggest you do cut up all the meat and then the pineapple and the onion and mix everything together and then start making your tacos. Ah, beautiful hot tortillas. We'll lay a couple of them onto this plate here. And then a tong full of the tacos al pastor mixture. I have to say, <laughs> You can get pretty close to the flavor of beautiful tacos al pastor with this method. Just make sure you cook the pork long enough on that one side. I have some salsa here. Could use chipotle salsa with roasted tomatillos and garlic. This is a three chili salsa, so it's not just chipotle. It's also got guajillo and cascabel, the nutty tasting chili like that. 
I, of course, like to see something fresh on top of the tacos al pastor. So I would take a few leaves of cilantro and put those over, perk it up, if you will, with that. And I will say there is no better eating than this.